have seen some of his work. I'm going to polish you up now. You may have seen some of his work, Colors, and uh, I'm going to get you Sucker. And Punchline, and, and Earth Girls Are Easy, and, and, and Wait, Beverly Hills Cop, and, 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 what you and, do Beverly Hills? and Roxanne. Beverly Hills Cop? The, um, that's the, here, you go ahead, take the bananas. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Did y'all easily I brought that back up? Oh, because you touched the hand like that. Yeah. And you did the whole feminine thing. Yeah. So that brought it back around to me. Yeah, but that was a big part of it. I have a lot of guys in love with me. <laughs> and you took the bananas. And he stuck them in the pipe. Oh, there he is! Get... Ooh! Where's your bananas, girl? Good evening, Whitey. <laughs> Y'all laughing. That used to be my act. When I, when I first started doing comedy, I was like real hostile. Man. I, I wasn't getting no work, though. The only two people thought I was funny. I had like two angry brothers show up to every show. <laughs> I dug your act, man. <laughs> I ain't laughed at hard since they took them hostages. <laughs> I, people were scared. I get introduced like this. Um, <laughs> um ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Um, uh, we'd like to bring up the next act. The next act, well, you're gonna love him. Uh, he's a favorite at the Black Panther Party. <laughs> uh, well, if you have to get drinks and go to the bathroom, now's a good time. <laughs> Please welcome the comedy of Mr. Damon Wayans. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Yaku. <laughs> Would you prefer old fay white devil cracker hunky trash? <laughs> it's good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a funny thing happened on my way down here tonight. I killed three white people. <laughs> oh, I guess you had to be there. <laughs> You'd have been dying. <laughs> Seriously, though, seriously, you know, a lot of people think that all black men are well hung. <laughs> this ain't the truth. You got brothers out there with three and four inches. Yeah, those are the ones that date white women. <laughs> Is this thing on? I'd like to do for you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do for you now a couple of quick oppressions. <laughs> yes, I do oppressions. My first oppression is of a black man working at IBM. You're gonna love this. Here it is, a black man working at IBM. <laughs> Wait, there's more. <laughs> the next oppression is of a black man on his day off. We're gonna use the same brother. <laughs> Here there's a black man on his day off. Say, man, let me out of here. I gotta go to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was on Star Search. And, lost. And uh, I lost. Don't mean to rub it in. <laughs> you lost. To a mime. <laughs> I lost to a freaking mime. <laughs> Must have been crazy. Unbelievable. You go out there, you do the show, and I kind of knew something was up because the judges were Shields and Yarnell and Marcel Marceau. So you figure it out. Hey, that was quickly yeah, a fix. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I feel overwhelmed by what's going on in the world, you know? I look at little kids. Kids in first grade are so advanced. So much more advanced than I was. Kids in first grade are reading books like the little word processor that could. <laughs> I studied math for 15 years. This is what I remember from all of my math training. Is it more than <laughs> or? Hey, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> you ever use this anywhere again in your life? What was the point of learning this, you know? How many times did a cop pull you over on the road and say, hey, you know, you were doing more than 55 miles an hour? <laughs> Officer, I was doing less than 55 miles an hour. Hey, pal, you were doing more than... And that equals a ticket. I am bad at math, I really am. I was so bad at math for years, I thought negative numbers are numbers that just didn't have the right attitude. I kept
happen to figure they're walking around a number system a little bit pissed off going, you know, can't believe I'm less than zero. <laughs> this is great. I was thinking the negative numbers hated the fractions too. There's probably a West Side Story rivalry going on there, you know? <laughs> And I think the negative numbers probably yell things out to the fractions like, hey, your mother's a decimal point, you know? <laughs> One day a big fight breaks out of the number system. The negative numbers and the fractions are brawling in the middle of the number system. All of a sudden, the rational numbers come running in. Hey, come on, man. This is crazy, you know? <laughs> Someone's gonna get hurt here. This is really stupid. <laughs> at least we had numbers. We were lucky. Look at the Roman civilization. They didn't even have numbers. All they had was Roman numerals. That must have been tough giving out your phone number in a singles bar way back then, huh? VII. I VIII. XXXXI. VIII. Dash. Tell someone about your parents. Well, um, my mo mom's, I don't know, I, I don't think it's just my mom. Mom's, for some reason, must have like all the knowledge of the universe. Because there are things that she knows that nobody else in the world could possibly know. It's like only my mother knows how long you have to wait after you break a glass before you can walk barefoot in the kitchen. You know, there's like a time limit. I don't know how this works. And only she can walk in. It's like she has Hindu, Hindu feet or something. I don't know what that is. Some kind of Hindu Stay feet. Stay back, kids. Don't... I'll take care of it. I like science fiction a lot. I see all the Star Trek movies. I grew up with that show. Now they have the new Star Trek on TV. Do you like that one better? No, with the blind navigator? There was a brilliant idea, huh? Guy was a Chevy grill on his face. No wonder he can't see. I like the old ones, but to me, the real science fiction is William Shatner has more hair now than he did 20 years ago. <laughs> Scotty's put on some weight, too, huh? <laughs> he can't even beam up. They need, like, six pods for this guy now. <laughs> Captain, I'm stuck. <laughs> well, that's what they're doing. They're taking all the old TV shows, making them into full-length movies. Star Trek, Superman. Of course, the new one is now Batman, right? Michael Keaton is Batman. You know who's the Joker? Jack Nicholson, that's right. Here's your freaking joke, Batman. <laughs> hey, these were two guys, Batman and Robin, I started to wonder about as I got older, you know. Well, Batman and Robin, think about it, two guys in their 30s that live with their aunt, dress up in capes and tights, <laughs> slide down a pole a hundred times a day. <laughs> right, one guy's Dick, the other guy's Bruce. They got a butler that calls a master, I know what's going on here. <laughs> They're still cleaning up bodies from last week, and already it's time for the moment of truth. The MTV March Video Madness Finals. Eight quarterfinalists duke it out Saturday. You pick the finalists by dialing the special 900 number at 95 cents a shot. Then Sunday afternoon, we go live. Five Eastern, two Pacific for the ultimate video battle, the Final Four. Which clip will you choose as the champion of champions? MTV March Video Madness this weekend. Now the real fighting begins. This is your brain on drugs with a side order of bacon, whole wheat toast, and our bottomless cup of coffee. And it's the $2.99 breakfast special here at the Pirate Diner before 11 a.m. But that's Irish. Irish people have to watch out because Irish people have a great attitude towards life. Yeah. But even a better attitude towards death. Yeah. You've been to an Irish wake? The Irish attitude towards death is, look, he was born, he lived, and he died. Now it's Miller time. <laughs> <laughs> I've had wakes in my family, $5 cover, three drink minimum ticket. <laughs> you die on Wednesday. The ladies drink free. Ladies, come on down. <laughs> Signs of summer. I was walking along the street today and saw a kid playing with a little gas airplane. Remember those toys when you were a kid? Yeah, one of those things? Made by Cox. Started up 7.30 Saturday morning while the neighbors were sleeping. They'll be sleeping, you put the oil in there. Start it right up. else is going on in the world? A lot of things are happening. Uh, George Bush is, uh, he's doing pretty good. I want to make fun of Bush. I'm not going to make fun of Quayle. The other thing about Quayle is you look at Quayle, you're not really sure if Quayle has leadership potential. You, know? you look at Quayle and you say, you know, having Quayle as president would be like having a substitute teacher for the country, you know? Yeah. 
As soon as he took over, everybody in America would start shooting spitballs. And <laughs> people be changing seats, running all over the place and everything. Ah! 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 Quail! Ah! Quail be standing in front of the White House. Now, people, get back to your right seats. And we go, but the other president let us move around. Hi, folks. Mario Jordan for the MTV Half Hour Comedy Hour. As most of you know, I've taken on an intern to help me with my comedy research. She's been learning the ropes, and now we're going to put some of these theories into practice. Okay, intern, let's hear your stuff. Hi, folks. How you doing? Hey, hold it. Hold it. Don't ask the people how they're doing. They're doing fine. It's not a quiz. It's a comedy show. Well, let's hear your first joke. Okay. You know, people say the stupidest things. Just the other day, someone asked me, how come you look so familiar? So I said, maybe you've seen me before. <laughs> That's the joke? That's no joke. Where's the humor? Well, maybe it works better in front of an audience. I am your audience. You're talking, I'm listening. Now, come on, let's get into it. Let's get the yucks coming in. Audience, you're lucky to have me as an audience with a joke like that. I hope it's not too late for her to change her major. Now we got these talk show wars going on between Oprah and Phil and who else we got? And, uh, and Gerardo. I take him real seriously. Next week he's going to open Al Capone's gym locker, I think. <laughs> and Morton Downey Jr., here's a guy with a nice personality, huh? It's like a pit bull on crack, this guy. <laughs> I think the most insulting thing about uh, the TV has to be the commercials that we got now. The dog food commercials got to be the most insulting thing of all. Because for some reason on television, they feel they have to make dog food look appetizing to us. If you notice that, they always have like dog food on a charcoal grill. The announcer's putting gravy on the dog food. I'm looking at my dog's bowl going, uh, are you going to finish that? It's mighty good. How about milk bone? That's worse. Why milk bone? Because naturally, as we all know, all dogs want fresh breath. I guess if you'd been drinking from the toilet all day, <laughs> you might want to pop a search yourself, huh? Hi, how are you? Billy Cupperpuss here, wondering if you, the general public, have thought about purchasing a pet lately, a handy companion to keep around the house. Ha <laughs> ha, sure you have. But why? Why spend up to $498 on a beautiful thoroughbred golden retriever like this when you can come on down the pet remnants? Only $4.98. Front leg of a husky. That's right, it's only the tip of the femur, ladies and gentlemen. We've got cats without ears, fish with brain hematomas, and look, on special this week, three blind mice, only 79 cents a pair. Do a little Ray Charles for me, baby. Pet remnants. We have been buying mutations now for well over 25 years. How do we do it? Well, I buy pets that have been in fire sales. I buy pets that have been in train wrecks, and yes, ooh, even water-damaged pets. Then I transship them here to our outlet store in Newark, where we mark them down low, 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 so that you, 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 the consumer, are guaranteed a good buy. Remember, when you're looking for the finest piece of pet money can buy, come see me, Billy Cupperpust, right here at Pet Remnants. For the nearest pet remnants near you, call 1-800... That's 1-800... That's 1-800... So I'm married, you know, married is true. It's, it's fun, you know, it's just, I think women are a lot more mature in relationships than guys. Yeah. 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 Cause, no, women, they, they understand love. They really do, man. Cause I see pretty women with like fat, bald headed men. You know, and you know it's love. Cause like if my wife got fat and bald, I'm out like a scout on a new route. <laughs> yeah. I'd be in court like, yeah, she's a good woman, young. But look at her. <laughs> look, she looked like you. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> See, my wife, I know she would stay if I, like, lost limbs, man. If I lost both my legs, my wife would stay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if I... If... <laughs> well, I would stay. I would stay. But I'd make her feel real guilty about it. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd sure like to go out dancing, but I guess we'll just... <laughs> stay home and play chess again, huh? <laughs> I met my wife like in a disco, out right here in New York, yeah. which is like a strange place to meet your wife. You know, cause the lights, you go to disco, them flashing lights make everybody look beautiful. <laughs> right? Everybody look good in a disco until you get up close. It's like, say, baby, you wanna... <laughs> hey, you wanna move out my 
goddamn way. <laughs> Tonight, definition of irony. The definition of irony. Go ahead. Florida lottery winner dies a happy man. Look at this. Three new cars, a used car, three pairs of shoes, a pair of pants, and half a race sauce were all Jackie Mallon had the time to buy with, with his $1 million, $1 million in Florida lottery winnings before he died of a parent heart attack. Oh, he won the lottery last month, and he died this month. That's ridiculous. And he bought a used car. He had a million bucks. <laughs> what the hell was he buying he when he didn't have any money? <laughs> what do you have, an eyes on a 64 Dodge Dart? <laughs> oh, I got my eye on it, you know. Oh, I'm not going to make any commitment on it yet. True story. See, I think if kids took over sports, we'd have less problems in sports, especially with the NFL. It's a big problem with this instant replay. Should we have it? Shouldn't we have it? Let a couple kids run the NFL. We wouldn't have the instant replay. We'd have do over. <laughs> hey, do it over, man. We weren't ready. Doesn't count. There was a car coming. So, wouldn't that be great next year? Do it at the instant replay and have the do over instead? Let's see, 80,000 people out there cheering the Meadowlands. <gasps> The Giants will do it over. No, they weren't ready. It doesn't count. There was a car coming. Only in New York do people play in the streets. That's when no one else do they do that. Then when you play touch football in the street, you sit there and you count and you go, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. What do kids in Mississippi do? One LaGuardia Airport, two LaGuardia Airport. Okay, intern, if you're going to tell a joke, you got to believe it. Don't let the audience know what's going to happen until it actually happens. They don't know that the chicken is going to get to the other side of the road. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, Mr. Joyner. Okay, good. Let's move on. Every good stand-up comedian needs three things. A good opening, a strong middle, and a big finish. You have none of these. So let's hear your good night. See ya. See ya? See ya? That's no way to close the show. That's what you said when you leave your aunt or your uncle's house. You need a big ending. How about this? Thank you, good night! I like that. Now that's how you close the show. That's wonderful. Finally showing some progress around here. <laughs> that's my intern. I don't own a car in New York, but I rented one the other day. It's got one of these real weird features, these automatic seat belts. Have you seen these? These are scary. If you get in a car with an automatic belt and you're not prepared, right? Because you don't have to do anything now. The moment you sit down, this electric belt comes over your shoulder. <laughs> you know, I expect the doors to lock and a voice to go, Goodbye, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I think it's good we have a, we have a seatbelt law now, though, at least, uh, you know, because there's a lot of bad drivers out there. Not me, of course, but... Uh, well, part of the problem, I think, is the way they teach you how to drive in this country, right? You're taking a road test, what do they teach you? Stupid things you can figure out for yourself. Right? How to make a three-point turn, they teach you. You hit enough cars, they figure this out after one. Right? <laughs> they don't teach you important things on the road test. They don't teach you things you have to know while driving. Like how to remove a lit cigarette from your crotch at 90 miles an hour. Let's talk about that. I'm going to do Laura Arsenio for you. Let's talk about the movie Colors. Oh. You were in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't. <laughs> Tell me something about that. <laughs> so what was that like? Because you played a gang member in Colors, right? Yeah. Uh, Colors was fun. Um, working with Dennis Hopper. Because he's like one of these guys. He's he's out there. <laughs> yeah, he, he's been out there. Yeah, though. he's like one of these guys that stopped doing drugs, but he's done enough to have a residual That's effect right. <laughs> for the rest of his life, man. And he's just like totally out there. And he wanted to, you know, the bunny rabbit scene. You know, people. A lot of people remember it. Uh, That's I was. What you and yeah. Yeah, I was just supposed to go in and get a hat. That's all. I was supposed to get a hat, and the cops come in and arrest me. And Dennis was like, "No, man, <laughs> you're too good for that, man. I want you to, I want you to get undressed, man. Take off all your clothes and go out there, just, just do it, man." <laughs> he gave that whole thing up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I thought that was your idea. And he was sitting there laughing like Satan, man. <laughs> 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 like, scary. You're talking to Damon Wayans for the MTV Half Hour Comedy Hour. You know, I get mad sometimes because racism, I mean, you know, you got to deal with it. I mean, people are stupid with it, you know? I was in the supermarket, minding my business. A guy comes up to me with a watermelon. 
A watermelon. This is what he said. Excuse me. Could you tell me if this here is ripe yet? <laughs> you know, like I'm the authority on this, right? I guess he, he wants to see me take it like this. <laughs> say, man, this here perfect. I'm gonna keep for myself. <laughs> Anybody see any Latoya Jackson pictures in Playboy? Yeah. I don't know why she did it, man. She didn't need the money. Yeah. Why? I guess Michael just upstaged the whole family, you know? They gotta do something for attention, you know? I wouldn't be surprised if I saw Tito in the back of Heine Boy magazine. <laughs> don't tell Michael. <laughs> see Michael Jackson's concert? That was a trip. His last concert. People tease him about his nose. I understand Michael's nose. I really, Michael needed a nose job. He started out with a big nose. His nose used to start back here <laughs> and come around like this, you know? But he's an incredible performer. He makes up for all his flaws, and he, he's out there, man, doing his magic, you know? My kids are into him. I got this Moonwalker video. They watch this like this. They won't move, you know? It's like, Damon, little Damon, the house on fire, he's just into it, you know? I can't get their attention unless I talk like Michael. That's how I get him to do things like... <laughs> Little Damon, could you do your daddy a favor? Could you pick up your toys and could you take them in the room? Right there.